Next, about assessment, especially on digital learning environments in practical tasks based professions in vocational education and training. We have here a senior lecturer in food production, Ona Haapakorpi, my colleague. Ona, what is the this assessment based on and how you measure and what you measure? Or how do you know who you measure? Please, Ona. Uh, thank you. And thank you that um, I'm again able to be part of this project. It's uh, really exciting. Um, first of all, I would like to tell you that um, me personally, I have been working for last half a year uh, behind the computer. So it means that uh, me personally, I don't actually see the, any of the students what I uh, give value for. So if um, I have any of the learning outcomes, I need to know specific learning outcome and then we do it as a team. But I will be coming back from that just a moment. So um, this, um, well, this uh, presentation or after this presentation or uh, the video, um, I'm going to talk about it. How do we evaluate our students' uh, competence? And um, I do hope after you have watched the video, um, you have clear um, idea how do we evaluate in order to match our learning objectives. Um, this, like I say, these specific examples or the model, what I'm sort of having as a case model, uh, it's called local food and creating menus. So, in, um, I, it's always really important to start with this. So, assessment of uh, competence. Uh, when we do assessment of competence, it's always related to our learning objectives. Uh, and our learning objectives, they define, they are defined in our curriculum. So, it's always part of that. And that's really important. We just uh, created a little bit smaller parts, but it's always out of the curriculum. So our learning objectives, uh, they define how the student demonstrate uh, their competence. But in our case, it's always really good to remember that uh, we are kind of part of um, guild school, which means that we have specific uh, ideology behind it. And our pedagogical idea is that we have open source. It means that all the material what students are creating, they have to be uh, open source. So what do we use or what uh, the students use just um, having an idea? I'm um, going to through of all of those uh, afterwards, but it's uh, sort of really, I think that um, that you understand what we're doing and how do we begin. It's that you first understand that all the possibilities what we use. It's case by case, and it's always depending of the group of the students, what apps we are using. Only what is sort of, 100% sure that all the students are always creating their online portfolios. So I would call it that a portfolio or digital CV, what we are using in here, um, I would call it that that would be as a notebook. So uh, you have in, uh, in your notebook, you have different chapters. And like you see in here, all the students or in here, the students, they have sub pages and though in those sub pages are always different models. So uh, like in this, um, this example, there will be a model called um, 
<laughs> local food and creating menus is under the subjects. Uh, the students, they are able to create the uh, digital portfolio looking like uh, they would like them to look like. There are just some guidelines what we are referencing for. Uh, basically, all material are created through uh, digital portfolios. So one of the sub -bates gives me all the information. How do I evaluate the certain students? Let's go for one example. So this one, uh, it's the first example. It's for case model learning outcome. It's how to calculate carbon footprint in his or her uh, menu. And like you see in this site, uh, we have, uh, this is from a block or portfolio what they have created. Um, and students, there's a clear indication that they have done a calculation through carbon footprint. And I know that that carbon footprint has been created through one kind of app, what we are using. It's called Yamix. And on the other side, this is closed Facebook and all the studying and all the um, assignments are through that closed Facebook. And I can see you know, again here, the students has created the menu. There's the photo of her creation and a li little bit upper third if I would have the look. There are the, the photo of the students when they are creating. And then there is the answer. So if I compare this answer and this answer, you can clearly see that this is much, much more higher. And I can sort of give um, the valuation much more higher than rather have this group work assignment, which they have done exactly, uh, they have replied exactly the same uh, question. YouTube. And what do we do through YouTube? What, how do we evaluate uh, the material through YouTube? Like this one, it's for the entrepreneurial skills. Uh, this is actually uh, ideas for the pop-up event. Uh, those two are professional CVs, and this is out of the competition. So what do I evaluate when I see the uh, videos? Always depending on video, but like this one, the professional CV, uh, I can clearly see that where this person has been working, what kind of items uh, he has been creating. And for me, it's really important how do that person uh, is able to explain the items, uh, the like this is the bakery students, uh, what he has made and which way he has made them. And then if, um, if we go for the here, this is really strictly um, future chef. And uh, I have an idea of the menu planning, what kind of uh, plating skills he might have. And it's always it's always depending of um, the YouTube or the video they have created. And then in just um, so, sort of clearance, uh, here are a lot of examples from the other videos they have created. They are a lot of different types of the videos, but it's always uh, depending what we are actually asking from them they could uh, give me just a slideshow and give me uh, just a text, or they could go for more visual and create as a YouTube. So, so the next uh, example, what uh, we had uh, in this one, it's the um, learning outcome we are asking that present the locally, uh, locality in his or her menu. And the other one, the conduct, the cooperation with the local producer. So this St. Lehman, actually this uh, video or YouTube video is 360 video. 
and there is two persons. They, they first visit a restaurant and then they actually go and see for a um, local producer. So I'm, I'm completely 100% sure the task, what they need to do. I'm clear that those two persons were there and which are the parts uh, that I'm able to give for Mark for. And this, the second one, the YouTube video would be having here. This is the version, um, actually this video exactly has been taken from Japan and uh, it's from the work placement where this person were and she's actually presenting some local pastry item and uh, this video uh, we can clearly see what she's doing, how she's going to do it, uh, is she fast, is she able to explain at the same time etc. Um, so this specific video uh, we used a skills competition demonstration so it's an authentic working environment. It meant that when we came back to Finland, her teacher was able to see it as well, the demonstration. So we use it a lot of different way, but when it's the video or the photos, I would be 100% sure that those are the people who they say they are in the videos. So. Then we have Instagram, Pinterest and just the photos. That's always the question what we are asking. For me personally, it's quite OK. Um, they can decide if they use uh, Instagram, Pinterest or just the photos. In this example, I have uh, those three are uh, just Instagram. We, we didn't have exact good example of the Pinterest, so I left it out. But all of here, uh, what we are looking for, it's like in here, I can clearly see this is menu planning, I can clearly see those two, they wear the t-shirts, and I, I can see that the main course and the salad at the starter or vegetarian option. Same goes here, uh, one of the tasks where that, uh, like you see all of the starting photos, the task is to evaluate that how do you look professionally. I'm happy with all of them, that they are proud and they, they are presenting themselves. So again, I am able to see this is the plating, this is the, the menu, one of the menu items what he has created. For this example, I um, I thought that I have something different. Um, it's like you can see uh, from the previous uh, slide that there was mainly for the photos. Uh, and uh, from this slide, we are asking that learning outcomes, uh, learning outcome is um, how to create a unique and innovating dining experience, including development and um, development uh, menu development and the plating. Uh, so the plating you were able to see from the last page, but how do you create the menu? There are a couple examples. Uh, this is this would be a video that they are planning the menu and they are creating something. Actually, the menu itself, um, this is the printed version and then there is the photo from, um, I'm not now sure was it in um, Instagram as well, but for sure it's in one page of that blog. Um, they have a study to think that what kind of tables they might see, um, what, what, what would be the greatest way for the do for this specific event in an innovative way. And uh, like here, if we have a look of those, I know that uh, those certain tables are from our kitchen and quite often the students, when they have created those, they have photos of themselves so or small clip so we know that okay they created ideas behind it they perhaps have tried the picture as well and so we combine of those and what they have real life creations 
and we know again that uh, how do we value it of that. And this example is still from the Instagram. We know that uh, this was one of the desserts. We know that that's, that's the way um, she wanted to display them. And uh, we know uh, just by looking at that it was quite good presentation. And it's always good to remember that when we sort of evaluate our students, it's group behind it. Like I said, for half a year, I haven't seen none of them, only through um, the video camera. But the other colleagues of mine, they have for sure, they have been in the kitchen or uh, waiting for the students. So they have been there. So then we combine the knowledge and that's the final uh, credit what we will give for them. So then uh, I have a question for that. Well, that's kind of the example. Uh, it's the, um, the learning outcome. It's demonstrate entrepreneurship skills, for example, budgeting, sellability and seasonality. And uh, in here, we value it in different way. And it, it would be the same as the other group as well. They have done a little bit similar, but just make it clear that you understand what we have done. This first is the closed Facebook, uh, where I have my questions, uh, where they reply, where they give me all those kind of answers. From there, uh, one of the tasks they have had that they need to create uh, some kind of um, page, could be Instagram, Facebook, etc., where they do the advertisements uh, for the clients. So that would be the page. And again, I can see that they have done the certain things. They need to create the menu. They need to mark down in this section that how much they need um, certain ingredients, how much uh, that would cost, and how much overall they should um, uh, what, what would be the price for them to sell it. So of course they have um, photos from actually event and then at the end they will create uh, the uh, YouTube video. So then we evaluate all of those and then outcome we will get uh, the clear um, sort of mark that how well they did it. So this is the last kind of um, visual, visual slide what I have it for you uh, this time. And I, I think that it's important you to know that um, this is the digital you and the future. And um, why I keep it sort of important and why I, I always say that we do everything what we do, we do for the open source. So it's for the two different points that perhaps I would be ill, then someone else is able to do the valuation exactly the same, then I would be able to do it. Then secondly, for the student's point of view, you perhaps you have seen it, this example earlier on um, as well, some of the ESCO slides as well, perhaps. Um, this is, like I said, we always start with the uh, block or the virtual CV, however you would like to call it. I know at the moment this is not, um, this is not open anymore. He has been graduated, let's say, four years ago, I would say. Uh, but this is creation through what we have done uh, in uh, the while he was in Omnia. Also, the second one, uh, we created a uh, Instagram account, professional Instagram account. And I know that that professional Instagram account is still available. And I, I know that the valuation what we have had um, look earlier that we would like to see certain kind of photos. Uh, we would like to have certain kind of information. I know that even now still, uh, he keep doing that and I'm really proud of that. And this is the last one. Um, while he was uh, still in Omnia, he created that LinkedIn account. And uh, nowadays that's the basic uh, 
professional account what he's keeping using. And that's my hope that all my students would do the same. But I, I can see a clear uh, path that how he has grown. And I also can see that how he has benefit the way uh, we have thought and evaluated um, that in order the future employers are able to see that uh, what he has done. That's so all. We, we could say that uh, his professional identity online has been evolving and developing. And I, I guess that put, to put it in short, assessment and evaluation is one tool or one way of helping him on his career path. Yes. So in personally, what I always say that uh, we are only a tool to them to get uh, wherever the future will, you know, bring them, but the future jobs and our way is just guiding them through different apps, but we are the tool for the future. Thank you so much, Anna. Thanks. It was nice to be here again. <laughs>